Why does God allow evil? God allows evil because he works evil out for a greater good. Because God is not bound by our three-dimensional space-time uh, universe, since he is outside it, he therefore is able to see all things at once. He, he knows everything. He knows what is going to happen. He knows what could happen. He knows what would happen if situations were different. He has potential knowledge of what um, he knows what could potentially happen if things were this way. He knows the realities of all that is going to be and is because in his etern eternal scope, everything that is, is within God. And so God is able to know and discern and see and also lead at times uh, and make evil work out for a greater good. God is not the one who tempts us. He's not the one who does evil. He simply permits and allows it because a greater good is going to come out of it. And just as uh, parents allow their kids to eventually get off the training wheels and ride their bike, they know that there's going to be times of falling and scraping and, and uh, evil that happens to them as far as um, getting injured and wounded. But they ultimately know this is for a greater good because eventually they'll be able to ride their bikes, they'll be able to ride their bike to work, whatever it may be. And it's also the same with as, as p uh, teenagers get to a certain age, parents begin to allow less restrictions and allow the kids to begin to live their life. Um, they, they, they obviously raise them up in the way of the word so that they won't depart from it. But obviously with our sinful selves, there may be times when teenagers go out and fornicate. They might do drugs. They might drink. That is evil that can happen from the parents allowing uh, the freedom for the kids to go out and have less restrictions because the parents have given them more trust. But even if certain evils and sins happen out of that, it isn't to say that those kids and whatnot are going to stay within that. That's just going to be a season of rebellion that needs to be addressed. But then ultimately, God knows if that can work out for a greater good by way of maybe that person gets in their 20s, they look back and say, man, I was such a fool. Why did I do that? Then they have a testimony. They're truly born again. Then they can go and help other kids understand that this isn't the way as a mentorship role or they can go and relate to other people and help them through their struggles and their battles, whether they're children, or teenagers, or they're adults. And so whatever evil that is allowed, God is always working something out. He knows the end because he foreknows all things. That Ecclesiastes 3.15 says, that which is to be has already been for God. So God is able to see the full scope of everything. There might be natural disasters that wipe out a city. Uh, maybe that city that needed to happen in that city and maybe potentially a few people died. And we say, God, how could you allow this? But maybe those people were born-again believers and if they lived a few years later, they would have gotten diseases and their death would have been much more uh, one of suffering. Maybe those... Um, People that died were sinners, potentially, and, and didn't want anything to do with God, and they were raising their kids up in the same, and their kids would have done the same. But now that their parents passed away, but the kids are still there, God knows that those kids will now need to be fostered into a home, and maybe they're led to a Christ-like home, by which they can come to know the Lord and experience the Lord and not live in the wickedness of their parents' sin. And we've seen this in Scripture from the Canaanites. God would send prophets over and over and over, telling them, repent of your sins, come to God, he is willing to forgive. But the Canaanites continued to neglect that, and of course, instead of going in the way of God, they continued in the, the, the lusts and orgies, they continued to sacrifice babies to Baal and to their gods, and, and even during that time, they would have people bang on drums so loud so they couldn't hear the scream of the child being sacrificed. And it's the same thing we do in America now. We just do it silently, we, and it's called abortion. We just do it silently within the womb where we can't hear the cry of a child. And so God can work out all evil for a greater good because God is the one who can only transform man and transform us out of our circumstance, transform our inner state, 
and disposition towards God and transform us from the standpoint we no longer live in sin and desire sin, but we want to get away from sin and pursue that which is of God, which is the best way. And so that's a few ideas of why God allows evil to happen. He's not the cause of evil. Evil is simply a privation of good, and he has given us free will to either do what he is calling us to or to not do what he is calling us to do, to want to know him more or to not want to know him and to live for self and do what we please. Now, obviously, as we had touched on a little bit, there are different evils. There's man-made evils. There's uh, uh, fleshly desires and whatnot that are evil. There are natural disasters that are, that are evil. There are diseases that are evil. And this all happened from the fall of, of Adam. And when sin entered into the world, so did all of these other evils. God does not make us do evil. He does not implant in us evil thoughts. Evil is simply the result of giving human beings free will but through this, God is the ultimate authority and judge, and he knows what needs to happen at the right time, and he knows what needs to be prolonged. He needs to know when he himself needs to personally intervene. He knows um, the long aspect of, let's say, uh, a child was raped, for example, by a family member, which is just terrible. But over the years, the child comes to know God, that child forgives the past, the wretchedness of what has happened, and that child goes and, be, and is a pastor able to share their testimony and to be a living witness that God can produce supernatural forgiveness in us and supernatural change in us. And then that person is reaching many for the kingdom of God. God knows exactly what needs to be done. And there are going to be times and seasons when we're like, God, why are you allowing this to happen? How could this happen? How could you let this happen? This is going nowhere. I don't see the end of this. I've done all that you've done, and then all of a sudden this happens. Why? But that is coming from fleshly emotions, and we need to understand that the problem of evil has two sides. It's either emotional or intellectual, and the intellectual problem is not the problem. It's usually emotional, especially when we're tied to that and we're experiencing that, or a family member is going through a certain evil that has happened to them or is being done to them, we are obviously much more tied close to that. And then we tend to lose reasoning sometime, and we just <clears throat> need to rest in the reality that God knows all things. He's going to work all evil out for a greater good. We know this. He sent his perfect son, who he allowed to be tortured, ridiculed, mocked, despised, spat on, all these hideous, heinous crimes and evilness to him. But yet what happened? He died on the cross. He rose again the third day. A much greater, overwhelmingly perfect good came out of the evil that was done to Christ, who was perfect and didn't even deserve what was done to him. So if God can do that for his own son, he can most certainly do it for us. And we need to have childlike faith and just trust that God is seeing the end why? Because he is the Alpha and the Omega. He truly is the first and he is the last. He is the beginning and the end. And he will work out evil for a greater good because he himself is perfect, pure, loving, kind, just, and good.